Once I worked with an engineer that was so capable, he knew absolutely everything. For me, it was like better than Google. He was on top of everything. He knew how to design things. He didn't have to learn. He was just there. He knew absolutely everything. And he was able to fix any problem, understand any system, immediately understand bugs. He was even anticipating bugs. So it was that type of engineer that you say, okay, this is a hero. And that was good to have in a team, but at the same time, there was a problem with that type of engineer. So the problem that we had was that the team wasn't trying. So the entire team was relying 100% on this guy. And whenever he was away, nothing was happening. People were doing just busy work, but nothing really from an engineering point of view was, was happening. We weren't doing design, we weren't doing anything because the entire team was under the impression that without him, we couldn't do anything. So that's where I realized that the team is more important because if you put everything into one engineer, one, you will burn out. Two, your team won't grow. No one will try because they know that any attempt will probably be overridden by the hero engineer that will come in and tell everybody what to do, how to do it, why every other solution is incorrect. And this is what we're going to talk about in this video today. Hi, I'm Anto. Welcome to my channel. This is where I share my experiences as a software engineer. Hope you like it. If you like it, click like and subscribe. So if this hero engineer resonate with you or with someone in your team or with someone in another team that you have seen, think about what is going to happen to your team in their absence or how resilient is going to be your team if at one point that engineer will resign. Most of the time these engineers are operating in this way, trying to be good, but is responsibility of everybody to make sure that doesn't happen or that is under control because one is not healthy for the engineer being the hero and two is destroying the team. The team is just a bunch of little helpers instead of contributors. So people are just there to receive instructions. And when you have a team with one lead that knows everything, has everything in their head, or one engineer, one tech lead that has everything in their head, everybody else is receiving instructions, you are creating the biggest bottleneck. That bottleneck is what I call a single brain team, because what you have is one brain. Everything has to go through that brain in order to be approved and processed. And the issues that you have is that one is not scalable and two, you are just destroying all the other people in your team because they don't feel valued. They feel they are useless without the brain. So I'll share a little bit now what has been my journey from individual contributor to team lead and now I'm managing multiple teams. When I started and I got promoted to team lead, I had the pressure of, oh, I need to have every single answer because I'm the lead. There is an expectation on me that I need to be on top of everything. I need to know every technology before my team knows that. And for a while it worked well. And generally this works when you are growing a team and you have a team of people that are less mature or junior. And that is fine for a little bit of time. But then with time you realize that one, if you start to have more senior engineers in your team, they want to play their role. So you should make sure you don't stop them from playing their role. That's thing number one. And now that I am leading multiple teams, there is simply no mental bandwidth to keep every single technical decision in your brain, to keep everything under control. So what you need to do, you need to learn how to delegate. You need to make sure you have a structure in place that will support your engineers. You can still do technical work, but it's not going to be essential and must not be the most important part of the work that you do because you will be stretched thin across a number of activities and you cannot be a, an individual contributor anymore. So if you put on yourself something that is on the critical path, something technical that is on the critical path, you are just jeopardizing the entire team, the entire work that you're doing. The risk is too high because you won't have the time. So you will end up moonlighting, working during night as an individual contributor and during days as team lead or manager of people. So this is what I realized very quickly. It's like, I cannot be technical anymore 
or I cannot do the technical implementation. I can still be technical, but I cannot put myself on the critical path because I just have too many things to do and my context switch is too high that won't let me do a good job. So I won't be a good engineer. I won't be a good example. I will be just a bottleneck. So what is going to happen if you are in that phase? So this can happen if you are just started as a team lead, you may have not realized that. But after a few months, you will realize that you don't have the time to do all the technical work that you were doing before. So you need to make sure you shift from expert to support. What do we mean? The expert is the one that knows everything about the technical aspect of a task, of a problem, of a system. And the support instead is someone that makes sure a good structure is in place to support your engineers, to support your leads, to support your senior engineers, because what they need, they need to have focus, focus time. So think as a lead, what can you do to remove disruptions, to remove interruptions during focus time for your engineers. That is 100% your job. You still like doing coding? Okay, do it in your own time. Carve out one day in the week or a few hours in the week where you can do non-critical piece of work. Don't take any critical piece of work because you will just make your team fail. So what are the things you must do? There are three things that you must do. One is trusting your team leads, regardless of where their technical expertise, if you hire them, you should trust them and you should give them guidance on what you think, where you think they can grow. The second thing that you need to do is create psychological safety so people can challenge ideas. And the best way to do that is to expose your own ideas and get them to rip them apart. Make sure people can give you an, a, a feedback on your ideas, even if it's not going to be positive feedback. So if it's a negative feedback, they should feel safe. If they can do that with you, then they will do with their colleagues in their team. So that's about psychological safety. And finally, it's your responsibility to build the right structure. Building the right structure means having all the right forums and meetings and making sure you are not abusing of meetings. Remember, every time you create a meeting, you are interrupting developers' focus. So how can you minimize the amount of meetings, but still create a structure that supports them? This is very difficult and is constantly changing, is constantly moving because your team maturity moves, your team discovers that there are different needs slowly with, with their experience. So is there a recipe for what is the perfect structure? No, it's constantly changing. So don't, don't even try to be super strict with your structure. If people don't show up, that structure doesn't work. You need to change. So this is a concept that is fairly common in Agile, which is the concept of the servant leader. A servant leader is not some, someone that is soft, uh, is a strategy, is how you build a high-performing team, is how you protect the team and how you let your team take the right decision. And this how you make sure your team makes the right decision. So remember, being a servant leader is not soft, it's not passive. It's deliberate and it's essential. So high performance is a team game. You need to make sure you calibrate everything in your team to have a high performing team. Having high performing individuals, most of the time is counterproductive. It's gonna break your team, especially if you have too many of them. They will fight, they will argue. So you need to make sure before you introduce a high performing individual in your team that you have the right structure. You need to support that individual to operate in the best possible way without impacting everybody else. So one thing that is important for me is to make sure the high performing individual in your team is aware of the problems that may happen if he doesn't manage his communication or if he doesn't give space to others. My suggestion is to always have the junior speak first and the senior only speak last. As soon as the senior or whoever is perceived as the most knowledgeable on a topic talks first, everybody will just agree with him. So that's one way to structure teams, but you need to cultivate this culture with your teams, with, you, with every single individual members. That's your job during one-to-ones, communicate to them saying, if you know the answer, wait for the others. So with time, you will realize that your job is not to be the smartest in the room, but your role is to make sure that in the room you can have smart people flourish. You need to make sure three things. The culture is healthy. 
the environment is safe so psychological safety is key and third you have a structure in place that supports your team I always focus more on what is the energy in the team versus what is the Jira board, what, what they have in the Jira board. I ask about how people feel, not what they have delivered. And I try to model the leadership as a, not as a dominance, but as a service. So make sure you are serving your team and your team will pay back. Your team will be happy. And when people are happy, they will flourish and be exceptional engineers. So if you are a developer that is becoming a team lead or your aspiration is to become a team lead, make sure you understand these principles, make sure you read about team culture, how high performing teams work, because that will make the difference and will make you a successful lead. So always remember strong culture scales, hero culture doesn't. Hope you liked this video, let me know down in the comments and see you soon, bye!